Seoul has been at the very top of my travel list for where I've been wanting to eat. Korea is absolutely having a moment in pop culture and beyond, and digging into the food scene in this beautiful country is a dream come true. So come with me as I find the best of the best. Let me tell you why. Hey guys, Jeremy Jacobitz here. I am here in Seoul, Korea, and the next series of videos, I have no idea how many they'll end up being, but they'll be sort of daily vlogs of looking for the best food in Seoul first, and then Tokyo, and then Osaka. And if you've seen the videos before, you know it's all amazing food, all a lot of fun, and it's gonna be sort of loosey-goosey, casual content coming to you, and some, you know, some travel tips uh, as well. I know you're standing me like, let's get to the fucking food. All right, let's, get to, let's just get to fucking food. And look, Luke is here. And Alexa's here. Yeah. We're the same oh, height. Oh, look, I'm standing, I mean, yeah, okay. She'll be here <laughs> eating a lot of food too. Yay. Can't wait. Okay. So we got in pretty late to Seoul and checked into the Grand Hyatt. I mean, the room is beautiful. See what the view is out there. There she is. We're here. All right, so I just needed something to eat before I went to sleep. So I got room service, got a little chicken club sandwich. That actually looks freaking delicious. It's not exactly what I thought my first meal in Korea would be. It looks damn good. Hot damn it. Do you eat this? I'm not falling apart. I'm very happy. Mm. I need to just go to sleep and then we'll back on for real tomorrow. Officially day one, and I wanted to try what were supposed to be the best bagels in Korea, but when told the wait was over two hours just to grab one, I decided it wasn't worth it. Did some touring next, checking out the Bukchon Hanok village, uh, which is preserved as it was 600 years ago. Stunning. And then the Chengdeokong uh, Palace Complex, which has these beautiful buildings and a huge park, all from the 15th century. After all that walking, it was time to eat. Gwangjang Market was the first and still biggest traditional market in South Korea, and since 1905 is still home to some of the best street food that Seoul has to offer. It could be overwhelming with so many stalls, but honestly, a lot of them have very similar dishes, so we just let our nose and our eyes guide us to what we needed to try. First up is the Binde Tok, which is a mung bean pan-fried pancake with mung bean dough, uh, which is blended with different veggies. Ours had chopped kimchi and bean sprouts in there. Very hot. It's so super crunchy. Nice and creamy on the inside. It's just like a latke. Next, we found the sweetest ladies. To be honest, every stall was helmed by the nicest people. And we got some veggie kimbap. And cold noodle soup, nang uh, which are super refreshing and a great mix of a little heat, little sweet, and super vinegary. Nice, refreshing, great flavor coming through. It's perfect. Yes, thoughts. Huh? Thoughts overall. Incredible. <laughs> Walking around, you can't miss the Tebogi, which are Korean rice cakes just bubbling in a gochujang stock. The best texture and always the perfect balance of sweet and heat. It's the best shoe of all the time. The best thing ever. And they're massive. Finally, this stall run by Yoon Sam Cho, uh, which you may have seen on Netflix as street food. She is more well known for her galguk soup, uh, which is a Korean soup with uh, knife cut Korean style noodles, but we were feeling pretty full and instead were entranced by her mandu, which are Korean dumplings filled with both kimchi and minced meat. Mm. Good? Yeah, it's a little spicy. I like it. Mm. Which one do you like better? The kimchi one I like better. Really? I mean, really great texture on there. And the boat is just like stuffed. Mm. Good job. Mm -hmm. What was your What was your favorite thing? I don't, I don't 
don't know. The tofokis are so good. But also the cold, the cold noodle soup. The cold noodle soup is really good. Noodle soup is good, especially because the top that felt good. I think the mung bean pancake. Like the mung I mean, listen again. Like if you're going to do something that's almost like a locket to me, that would be my favorite. And it was just like so crispy and so creamy. The perfect. I mean, everything here was like texture was incredible. Flavor everywhere. was. It's like texture, acidity, vinegar, a little bit of heat in like all the Sweet bites. Heat. Sweet heat. Yeah. So good. Fantastic. And like a little overwhelmed with options, but if you really break it down, there's not too many things to try. Not that many things. Yeah, you just have to like give it a good walk. A good yeah. walk around. Yeah. And you're good. Okay. For dinner, we went to the Dom, uh, which has a few different set menus called Pan Kyungsuk. Uh, which was a mix of modern takes on traditional Korean dishes. We needed a chill night, so this is perfect. Here's what came with our meal, which was 35,000 won, or like $27 per person, which was crazy for this amount of food. Started with the porridge and seasonal kimchi, a salad, sashimi, noodles, and mung bean jelly salad were next. Both some Korean traditional boiled pork. They are a special duck. <laughs> Japchae, which is always a favorite one. It's like a sesame flavor. Mm -hmm. Bulgogi. Then my favorite bite, this crispy, sweet, and savory mushroom dish, like almost a duck sauce flavor going on. Mm. That's really good. Rice stew. And then to finish. Cranberry. See the finish. Overall decent and a great way to taste a lot, but I don't know if it's my favorite meal of the trip. So what dish looked best to you? Let me know in the comments below. And if you made it this far, a sub would be great because I go on food adventures all over the world, including a ton more videos from Korea. And here are a few other videos I think you'd love.